So here's a synopsis. Learn how to bias your amp and do it every three months. Check it every three months. Mine drifted. I've never heard my basement sound. I say I never have. I don't think I've heard it sound this good in years. I was so excited last night. I couldn't stop playing. I mean, I never heard some of the chords coming out of that thing were so full and I could hear every note. And, I, and I'm thinking, was that just the bias that did that? That's all I did was two things. I changed the bias and I changed one uh, screen grid resistor uh, on the tube socket. You know, the two big resistors, they say act like fuses for your power tubes that sit on the sockets. I changed one to make it match with the other one. And to all the amp builders out there, if you want to do an experiment, and let me know if you do, and you, and you mod, modding guys that like to mod your amp, but uh, make sure those two resistors match. I had one at 470 ohms and the other one at 448. I had this theory that uh, had them match that the bias would change some. And it didn't really change much significantly, so I can't say that that really ha changed the bias. But something I did, either change it, set it, resetting the bias or uh, making these two match, made the amp sound amazing. Also, those, those screen resistors are these right here. Right there. 470 ohm, 470 ohm, one watt. And I just made those exactly 470. I mean, you know, they don't have to be exactly 470, but I, I happen to have two. Now, one thing I was concerned about with this one, at first I thought it was cracked. And I don't know if you can see this. See that seam right there? And it looks like it was made that way because I can see the paint was kind of smeared. And yeah, and then it split on this side. It looks like they had two halves and pressed these together, which I've never seen one made like that. So I wasn't so sure about how great of a quality this was. Like I said, at first I thought it was cracked. So I said, well, I need to change it anyway. So on to the initial video. So how you guys been? Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust your bias on your amp, on an old amp, and uh, why it's important and why you should check it at least every three to six months. And what happened recently, I guess about a month or two ago, I checked the bias on my tubes. They're uh, new old stock CBS tongue saw 5881s, and they were new old stock, so they'd never been used. And I decided to check them after playing them for about three months and they had drifted quite a bit. And I, if I remember correctly, they went down. So let's say I set it at 38 or 40 millivolts or milliamps, depending on what you use. It had dropped down, I think in the twenties, one tube at least, they're, they, they're pretty closely matched, but I was wondering why it dropped so much. And they can drift higher too, so that's what I will discuss in this video. I think one of the most important things you can do with your amp electronically is to learn how to bias it. Because I, I've been reading on some of the forums when I was looking up how often you should check it, is that some of the new marshals get this runaway bias where it goes really high and then the tube's red plate. And you can damage your tubes if that happens. And I'll show you what it means by red plating and how to adjust it and what I use to adjust it. But, uh, well, let's get going. Also, FYI, you see my little lavalier. This is all Rode. This is Rode Wireless Go 2. And I just want to let you know that after three months, I had to send it back in to be repaired, which was a pretty big disappointment. Uh, you know, Rode's a great company. And they got it back to me in about a week, but I just wanted to... Uh, give you a heads up that they're not as dependable as you would hope they would be. They had to replace the motherboard. All right, we'll take a little tour here. Uh, and we'll check this later. I got my uh, Carl Hartman Amp Maniac set at 114 volts, which is the sweet spot on this amp. That puts my heater voltages on all the tubes at 6.3 volts AC. And... Uh, We'll check that in a little bit just to see if it's right.
But if I see this drifting when I'm jamming and stuff, and you know, voltages fluctuate in your house, I'll, I'll go over there and put it back to 114. But this is the old 1960, of course, it's semi-famous now. Uh, there you can see the CBS stamp on these old tubes. Oh, shoot, it's over there, I can't see it. 58, 1958. Here's what you need. You need a couple of meters, which I don't have on yet. And you need a dual bias tester. And I see they still sell these out there. They're not the easiest thing to find. But I like the dual because you can uh, plug both tubes in and you just flip a switch and you check both tubes to see if they're matched. Otherwise, you gotta do each tube separately and that's a pain. Now they say, one thing that I've never done in the past is let the amp warm up at least a half hour. They say now, because they drift, when you're checking it when you first start, you'll notice that they start to drift upwards usually, and you'll end up having to adjust it lower. But this amp's been on for 45 minutes, so this time I'm doing it a little bit differently. Let me go get my chopstick. All right. So these old 1960 tweed basements, they didn't come with an adjustable bias pot or trim pot. It's right there. I added that. There's usually just a resistor that goes across here, 56K usually. And it, in the old days, if you wanted to change the bias on your tubes, you had to change that resistor. So this replaces that. And I can just turn that little screw and be done with it. The bias probe will go into this meter and it'll measure millivolts. There's a resistor in here that converts it from milliamps to millivolts and it's very precise resistor. But uh, so this will be the bias voltage on both tubes and this will be the plate current which to do the plate current I haven't hooked up yet. To do the plate current you're going to hook up to where the power transformer comes out and then you hook uh, the ground wire to a ground wire. I usually hook it up to this little wire here. And that is very dangerous. There's like 450 bolts on these things. So you have to be very careful. And in new amps, I know, I know they have to be accessible. I can't tell you because I don't have any new amps. I mean, I, I really don't like printed circuit boards, but you know, you have to buy his tubes every time you buy, uh, put in a new set. So of course they should make it fairly accessible. I know some amps, you can bias them without even taking the amp apart. They have a bias port on the back, which is a great feature. So you guys will be the first ones to see if my bias has drifted because I'm getting ready to turn this thing on. Now I want to go millivolts, so I'm going to have to change this to millivolts. So, see, I'm out, it's pretty hot right now, 44.7. But we're going to have to check the, let's see what the other tube is. 35, what is a big difference here? 44, 35. So they've kind of spread apart. They were a little closer than that before. Sometimes you can switch sockets uh, and it might change it a little bit, but usually not. That's, that's interesting in itself. But one of them's probably on the hot side, so I may have to turn this thing down a little bit. And they get a funny sound. I mean, if you're, if you're playing your amp and you, and you notice that it's not sounding quite as good as it used to, it could be your bias. Um, if they get too cold, they get this weird kind of nasty distortion. I don't know what you call it, but you know, they say to adjust these by ear, and that is not so easy because you've got to adjust it, then play it, adjust it, play it. Uh, for me, it's better just to go 70% plate dissipation, which I will put a link to the chart that I use, the Weber bias chart, in the description. Let me turn this down right now a little bit. All based off of your uh, plate voltage. So I, I lowered it a little bit. But first, I've got to go check my plate voltage to see if I'm at 70%. All right, I put you up here. 
Just in case, if I get shocked, this will be a viral video for sure. Okay, that's the ground. Let me turn my voltage on my meter here. This is DC voltage. I get nervous just touching it. All right. 434 volts at 43 millivolts on the right tube and 35 on the left. So I'm going to go look at my chart and we'll see where 70% is when I'm at 434 volts. All right, I went and checked at 436, 41.7 millivolts. So I'm a little bit on the hot side. So yeah, 437, it would be 41.7 volts, millivolts. So what happens, and I had to try to explain this to a musician the other day who really didn't know much about amps, but if this thing gets, if they start running too hot, these gray plates right here will glow red. I mean, like they're red hot. They're literally red hot. And if they're doing that, you're damaging those tubes and they should never run like that. And even running hot when they don't red plate will wear the tubes out faster. So I'm glad I checked it. It's drifted a little bit too high. I'm going to have to lower it here. So let's go up here. Just trust me. I'll tell you what numbers I've got. I need to go down at least a 41.7. Shaking a little bit. 41.7. And when you do that, your plate voltage is going to go up too. So I'm at 41.6 now on the hot tube, 34, 33.7 on the other tube, 41.6 voltage, uh, plate voltage went up to 438 volts. Let's show you right here, 41.640, and then the other tube is 33.7. And, you know, there's a ton of arguments on they should match, they should match. Uh, some amp guys, techs, really like them mismatched because one tube will run a little dirty and the other tube will be clean. And the blending of it sounds good. And I just sent some tubes to Italy and they were fairly, maybe within 20% matched. And they sounded fantastic. I actually didn't want to ship them over there because I wanted to keep them. They were a really nice set from 1962. But I think I can live with it right here for now. And 34, let's call it 33.7, 438. Like I said, I'll put that uh, chart in the description, the link. I've got the... Uh, the voltage set at 114 with the Carl Hartman Amp Maniac. You have to be careful. I'm going to set my voltmeter at, on AC. All right. Finally got it hooked up there. And you can see over here, 6.32 volts. So that's uh, pretty close. I can dial it in a little bit. Let me go down a hair. Oh, that went up. 113, right between 113 and 114, and that's it. So uh, just check it every three to six months, and you should be good to go. And always look out for those uh, that red plating. I mean, you don't look at the back of your amp a lot. The drummer might tell you, "Hey, why are your tubes glowing?" You know, so <laughs> or like in one of my gigs, uh, what's that smell? and the amp had blown up, but that's a long story. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. I got a lot of, a couple of things coming up. I'm gonna do an interview with Dan Albrecht with Area 51. It'll probably be within the next two to four weeks. We haven't really set it up yet. And then I haven't even asked uh, Carl Hartman, who builds the Amp Maniac, 
but I'm sure he would go along with it, but I might interview him too. So when you guys get a chance, you know, subscribe, hit the bell, and hopefully you'll get a notification. Some of the subscribers didn't get a notification on the last interview and they did they would have come if they had gotten it I, i'd like to do it around either 9 or 11 so that i don't, don't overlap with uh, rj ronquillo ronquillo but yeah we'll do a couple of those interviews and i think you'll you'll find them interesting all right we'll talk to you later all right one thing i wanted to discuss is uh when you take your amp to an amp tech he's going to play it safe he's going to set that thing probably in the middle of the range, uh, average. So that if it does drift up, you don't cause any problems. If it drifts down, you'd probably be okay. But when you can do it yourself, you can fine tune that. They're gonna play it safe and you can be a little more aggressive. You can set it on the, the hot side, they would call it, like the 41.3, and then just monitor it. That's why it's so important for you to learn how to do this and just don't, shock yourself because it is deadly but i hope this helps uh the amp techs are always going to be conservative and if you want to get the best out of your amp do it yourself uh, i remember i took a good fairly decent sounding marshall well the only marshall i ever had into the amp repair guy i forgot what for and uh got it back and it sounded worse and i've heard that story over and over again that's because they rebias the tubes they rebias them really on the cold side and they, they just don't sound as good so do it yourself talk to you later